Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and welcome to the newest edition, and probably not going to be around for too long, but the newest um, experimental edition to our fleet. Welcome to the Sea Slug, because in my heart, in my mind's eye, it kind of looks like a Sea Slug, how the armor has ended up being. This, as you can probably tell by the fact it's underwater and moving by itself and staying at a steady um, altitude. Altitude, uh, depth, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for there, is indeed a submarine, which packs two very nasty um, torpedoes, I may add. Yes, this is this is my first ever working submarine. Now, it's made out of very cheap parts for a reason. I wanted it to be extremely affordable. Originally, I wasn't even going to add weaponry to the thing, but it turns out missiles, oh, we did actually hit target, can, can be ridiculously cheap. So, here we are with everything. Um, it floats, it, well, sorry, it doesn't float. It stays at a constant depth, it moves decently, it can turn and pitch very nicely without flipping over. I think it'll stop, well, stop um, continuing the flip eventually. And then if you let go of the turn, it'll simply regain its posture. And it actually works, to my astonishment, and the depth is completely AI controlled with my first ever attempt at using these sodding things, the automatic control blocks. This marks a great achievement for Lathian kind, and possibly, very possibly, big plans in the future, because you see, I really like this ship, I really like the idea of the submarine, so I think we're going to be making a huge battle version in the future. But for now, I wish to simply explain how this thing works, because a lot of people were actually asking in the comments, like, wait, how do submarines actually work? And they're kind of bizarre, like, um, it's not difficult once you get the gist of them, but they're very finicky. Uh, but not so much as planes, actually no, more so than planes. I, I find planes a bit easier to build, I'll, I'll be building one of those in the future, but currently I want to dominate the seas, the airs can come later. Rule Britannia, Br Br Britannia rules the waves and all that. So. As you can see here, next to the extremely explosive material, we have our beautiful air pump, which is currently pumping out water to keep us afloat. Now, that would actually cause us to simply float to the surface, as when that's on, well, we float. Simple as that. We will actually slowly raise. Like right now, you can see, if I actually turn off, there you go, you can see I'm actually going up. My overall depth is increasing, so I'm, sorry, well, decreasing I suppose, so we're getting higher and higher up, which, which eventually will cause it to float on the surface, which isn't what we want. We also have a nasty habit of floating a little bit upwards there, but yeah. Oh, are we now going back down? Now we're now going back down, because of these two beautiful controllers. So how these things work is this. It's a little bit comp- when you first look at it you go, oh dear lord, I have no idea what I'm doing. But it's actually really simple with the- because, to be fair, there are much more complex versions, you can do things of this, but this is a very simple thing. Activate when altitude is greater than, make sure you activate the air pumps, and- so you use the air pumps and you deactivate them. So every time this, um, this vessel gets above minus 26.5 depth, it will turn off the air pump. Meaning that suddenly this thing is literally a block of metal and will slowly sink back down to the um, surface of the water. We're going backwards slightly, I thought so. Then the other one is the opposite, as you might imagine. Air pumps activate when altitude is less than, so when we're under minus 33, the air pump will turn back on and will keep us and will start to fly us back up. So essentially, we're always being kept between minus 33 and minus 26. You can make this smaller or larger as you wish. If it's larger, of course, you'll bob more up and down. If it's less, you'll stay at pretty much the same altitude, although that can cause some stress on the air pump because it's turning off and on so quickly, it can actually break. There's a bit of a bug at the moment where air pumps can simply fail to recognize what they're in if they're turned off and on too rapidly. This is a known bug which is about, apparently going to be fixed fairly soon and it may actually be fixed by the time I'm, I'm even posting this because this is going to be like three videos ahead of what I've currently posted so yeah. So that's pretty much that. Oh these things. These are actually jet stabilizers and I found them so useful. What they do is essentially they are anti-pitching. They're anti- uh, not pitching, what's the word I'm looking for? Rolling. Uh, this thing was happening now, I can't think of what I'm looking for here. When the thing kind of starts to capsize to the side, these are the ante of that. So as it does this, it gets less and less um, flipped and eventually it kind of stops it from flipping any further. This stops the thing from kind of capsizing going upside down. At the bottom we have lead to make sure that the bottom is always the bottom while we're underwater. And that is essentially that, and, I had and I've added glass because it's pretty. Hmm. I wonder, do you think the harpoons, sorry, the, um, you can actually do harpoons away, I've done them recently, they're awesome. I wonder if the torpedo is actually homing on the, on the spawn beacon. They do, excellent. 
Anyway, enough about that silliness. We're here for a reason today, sir and sir. It's not only to show off this lovely thing, this lovely sea slug, but we want to do two things. And by the way, yes, I did notice the sound glitch at the very end of that last that cl last clip. That's because I turned off fraps too quickly and I can't minimise the screen and didn't um, quite k keep up with the audio. Anyway, uh, the important thing is today, sir and sir, I want to make sure this can actually work with a naval AI. I don't... What are you doing? Yeah, I don't really... <laughs> That's distracting me now. Um, I want to make sure this thing works with a, with a naval AI, as I don't really want to be piloting this thing manually. I really, really don't. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, this vehicle has, has a nasty habit, like I said earlier, of kind of dipping a little bit at, at the front when it's resting. So we're going to... Sorry, dipping backwards when it's resting. So what we're going to do to counter this is put the weight of the mainframe, the brain frame, in the front. So... Six-way connectors. We don't need much. Actually, could just attach the. Um, can we just attach the card straight to the mainframe? Uh, this way. Yes, we can. Brilliant. So, what do I want? I want a naval AI. Where the hell is the naval AI card? It's probably just right there, wasn't it? You know, most likely it is there because it's this aerial naval. There we go. Of course, it is there. Click. Okay, the naval AI is now attached, and I would like some target prioritization because I find that one the best weapons wise. And finally, then we're going to want to add a. Oh god, look at that! That's so distracting! A Wallace transmitter, because we're going to make the weapons, of course, automated as well, because what's the point of all this if we don't do that? So, local weapons controller, let's put the clink on there, wonderful. Ah, oh, darn, I was hoping I'd put it actually on the. Ah, oh, damn it, okay, so. Not a wood block, uh, metal block. Put it there. Then AI, weapons controllers. Click it in here. Put the fail safe on it because, well, we're going to need a fail safe on this thing because, because the torpedoes otherwise will rip apart our normal ships. And finally, we want a wireless receiver. Click OK. So let's save the vehicle just in case we just screwed everything over. So, just in case I want to change things in the future. So, right now, this is automated. Yes, yes. Okay, so C slug, I want you to go. Over here. What are you gonna do about it? Uh, let's turn off. There we go. So, so I can actually see how it's handling itself. Oh, it's turning. Yep, it's doing what I wanted it to do. Okay, brilliant. It is actually doing what I wanted it to do. That's absolutely fantastic. It, it's tipping a bit while it's turning, but that's fine. That's what it always does. And now, is it going the correct way? I think it might be. No, no it's still turning. It's very sluggish on turn. <laughs> it's very sluggish. Um, astonishingly, the sea slug is sluggish on turning. Is it going the right way? I'm not sure it's going the right way. Okay, let's make let's make it go away, which I can kind of see if it's going the correct way easily. So we'll we'll start sending it towards the spawn beacon instead. Oops, Desi, grabbed the wrong vehicle there. Let's get the sea slug and start moving it towards the spawn beacon, if possible. There we go. Yeah, it's not turning correctly. Oh no, it is, it is, it just took a second. I think it was deciding whether to go left or right and it couldn't quite make the decision. I mean, this thing is going to be yeah, sluggish anyway, because, well, the whole thing's slow. What is causing this bizarre turning pattern? It's like it tries and it just kind of doesn't understand what it's doing and then I mean, eventually it gets there, that's the important thing. Is it because I've got two rudders? I mean, to be fair, the rudder is a terrible placement. Uh, yeah, go on, let Let's get the, the rudder, and what we'll do is we'll put the rudder in the center instead. You know, as you're meant to. And we'll take away the two side rudders to see if that helps. Ooh, ooh, ugh. Oh, that's because it's already facing the right way. Uh, no, not quite. Oh, that looks better. That looks better. Okay, that's much smoother. Oh, and it's doing it again. What is causing this weirdness? It really seems to struggle to... There we go, now it's facing the right way. So it does eventually get there. It's not like it's going to be completely useless. I think it's just the weight of the thing, and it's just not very agile. I think if we made it lighter, added more thrust, etc., better engines... It's going the right way now. Okay, so... Let's turn off that. Uh, let's turn off your current... thing. Actually, no, let's pull all, so it gets to at the point it wanted to. And then spawn it back in. And I'd spawn an enemy and see how it does. Oh crap, you have to spawn it lower, don't I? I forgot about that. Oh, and I'm going to have to wait for it to sink. 
back in a second when it's actually sunk. Uh, now nah, we'll leave as it is. Just uh, let us. I just want to see if it'll actually fire on an enemy. There we go. There's a sea viper over there. How are you going to deal with this, Mr. Sea Slug? I'll take currently it's out of range anyway. So, oh, it's definitely turning to face the enemy. It is doing what it should be doing. But will it actually fire the guns? I mean, it should do. Two receivers. They are attached. Um, they're actually controlling the weapon. That's the question. They're not control. Oh, for frick's sake! Of course they're not. Derp de herp de herp de herp. Even things I actually understand can sometimes elude me. I'm gonna have to have it here, which is gonna be really awkward to do. So it's uh, mirror mode. Turn off both our weapon control. Well, destroy both the weapon controllers. Destroy this. And what I want is essentially the whole. I want it exactly as it was, just one lower. That's all. So AI, weapon controllers, click, and then we want the wireless receivers here instead. And it instantly fires. So if I was, I was just waiting to shoot. Also, it's got to the depth, to its depth at last. Okay, that's fine. So it does function in combat. It turned to face the enemy. It looked at the enemy and it decided to fire at the right time. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> I'll probably change the weapon controller's accuracy as well to be 180 degrees so it doesn't try and shoot at things behind it. <laughs> oh, oh, and yes, we are using the sniper slash shotgun uh, missiles, by the way. That's why it's so absolutely devastating. So it's essentially two missiles from my Salmonella's main ship. My main uh, weapon is on this thing. Okay, beautiful. So let's do this then. Let's, um. Da -da 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 -da. No. Uh, yep, AI, weapon controller, failsafe. Because obviously at the moment the failsafe is now in the wrong place. So I want them here instead, not floating in the air here. There's a waste of metal. Okay, I think I'm going to actually make some of these as a bit of an, um. A bit of, as, as an ex escort ship for for our lovely Salmonella. That's our, this is our first AI, AI controlled vessel. They're extremely slow, but extremely annoying to anything that's on the f which actually is floating on the water. Of course, one huge con for this is that the missiles it's shooting are just pure torpedoes. They simply won't target um, air units at all. You can actually make um, submarines that have turret that have um, torpedoes that turn into m missiles when they hit the surface. Also, so it can turn absolutely fine when I'm not giving it a direct order, but it, so it only really happens when it, with the orders. That's weird. So, yeah, let's see how this does in the campaign, and I'm going to make a few of them, and I'll be right back once they're already made. I'm going to use them as a fleet. Uh, three or four of them, and I'm going to try and kill some, uh, try and clean up some of the weak enemies around the base. So, back in a second. And we are back back sir and sirettes however combat has just started i'm not sure which two are actually in combat right now uh is it the salmonella which currently or is it this oh no it's not horm oh darn i was trying to get hormone out of there actually he's still moving let's just fast forward which one of my shit oh it's this sea slug okay so while we were gone i managed to make two sea slugs forgetting that i should have let them sink first so that the game would allow me to put them down in altitude they're both currently at the surface so it's going to be the salmonella and two sea slugs versus the strength 30 sorry, strength 20 it was strength 30 they must have um, split yeah there's the other half that's bizarre so it's a strength 20 enemy i might just have two sea slugs but i don't know what the enemy is i'm not sure if it's flying or not it doesn't tell me that so, what I'm going to do is spawn in the two sea slugs first, have a look at the battle, and if the battle is actually against an air unit, I will simply, um, I will simply spawn in the salmonella. Let's see. Is that a coffin nail? Oh lord, there's a coffin nail. Okay, you definitely need, need the, the salmonella then in this fight. So all the sea slugs are going to act as then is is distraction units. Actually, isn't too bad. I mean, that is one good use. <laughs> Look at that. There's our um, radar tower. But there is actually one good use of um, submarines because a lot of the a lot of the um, speed and strength of, of regular cannons is lost once it once it hits the water. So they do take a lot less damage than the regular ships. We did sadly lose the gun straight away though. Before again, because I forgot to let them go underneath the water. So at the start they were essentially just regular ships. I don't see this coffee nail surviving more than a few minutes, a few seconds, honestly. This the missiles are just now landing, and already I see it, its propeller section has been knocked off. Again, sometimes some of our missiles just don't go to the target. I'm not sure which... So, quick look. 
So let's quickly go back to the sea slugs and actually get back to the vehicle a bit quicker. Which missiles aren't locking on? So right now it's the ones at the back. Why are the ones at the back not locking? Well, some of them are, some of them aren't. I don't quite know what's going on there. The front ones aren't. Despite having a lock. That's... Oh, no, no, they are, no. Some missiles just don't, it seems. I'm not sure why that's actually happening. Oh, just saw a big explosion on the coffin. That's bizarre. Why are they... Why are they arcing so violently? Why, I mean, they do most of them are landing. It's just the odd missile just seems to not want to do it. Perhaps the barrel's getting in the way of the targeting laser. Perhaps the vehicle just decides, no, I want to target something else for a second. It could be anything. There we go. And now it's a bit lower. Our main missiles will actually be able to fire very, very soon, which is lovely. Also, our main cannon just came online, so there we go. Fantas so, anyway, I want to address something. I need to change this vehicle slightly. The thing is, with the, talk with the submarines, one hull breach could literally spell the end of the vehicle. Because, well, I lose my, my ability to get off the sea floor, as I can't be buoyant anymore. So what I'm going to do is... Oops, put one there. One there. For some reason they're not... They are there, it's just not showing me the thing for some reason. Where are they? The repair box. Do I even just add a repair box? I got so distracted then. Let's just uh, make sure we're doing it correctly. Then I want one. Then I want a couple on the outside as well for the weapons. Essentially, the idea is I want it to have some ability of self-repair because I'm not going to be in this vehicle. I kind of forgot that. There you go. Yeah, it's all good. So that's how the sea slugs going to look now with four repair bots. Just so minor damage, minor things which happen. Just going to save the game while I keep waffling on. Minor damage that happens to the hull, to the weapons, can be repaired by itself. I don't have to go to the ship and fix it myself if I'm currently on, on the Salmonella, which I want to be on as much as possible. The other sea slug is currently damaged. I'll just pop onto that and do the same to this one, because obviously it won't change all the vehicles I already have available. It's just going to change future sea slugs I actually build. It was good to see that, that the sea slug did face the correct way, though, and everything, so everything went well. There we go. So here's hoping the second um, wave is actually ground, so we can just use two sea slugs against it. I mean, it's only strength 15 now. The problem is it's very, very fast, which kind of indicates to me it's probably going to be an atlas or something. Oh, once again, how do you set it so the altitude goes straight to the bottom? Because we were quite low then, the game instantly, instantly didn't allow me to spawn in a lower altitude. If anyone knows that, by the way, feel free to tell me. Was I facing the wrong way? Good job, good job we had the fail safes. Enemies over there. Is it air? Oh no, no, it is in fact a Kalmar. Lovely. Let's see how my guys do. Yeah, I was facing the wrong way. Whoopsie daisy, my bad. That was a complete error in terms of just um, gameplay. So there's the enemy. There's us. Yeah, I need to. Oh god, I forgot to alter the, the, the accuracy. Thankfully, I'm, I'm underneath now, so most likely that's going to just skim over the top of me, but oh lord, it actually has a proximity fuse! <laughs> okay, so, how do you fix that? That I, I hear you will ask. Well, it's all to do with the weapon controller. Da -da 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 one of these buttons. Oh, it isn't these. Hmm. I thought it was. Is it the actual missile block itself? It might be. Ah, required accuracy. Oh, it does have quite accuracy already. Okay, I actually don't understand how it works then. So 45 degrees will be basically in its front arc. That's fine then. Yay, the first torpedo should land. Now, the main thing I really want to just watch is how li how much damage this thing's going to take from the shots. Of course we have glass at the front, which is a terrible idea really. It's low defense and makes a hull breach very, very likely. But let's see if our two extraordinarily cheap vehicles can... Oh. I love, I love how I try and smart target and half time just goes too far like that. Yeah, but let's see if our two cheapo ships can actually deal with this. Where's our other one? Um, see, they're both firing. Tactical view. Spawn into this force. There you go, it's so actually in the ship. Is he actually run aground? That's actually not very good for us, because now, as you see, the missiles are scathing it because they're in proximity. They're going to almost hit the ground. 
I'm I'm very happy in terms of the low damage it's actually taking. It's very hard to see a battle when when you're using submarines. Oh, just, oh, good, good, good. He's finally got away from that. Oh, that went straight through the front section. There's a big hole there. It went straight through. I think that I think that these seats are going to make excellent um, distraction vehicles. What do I keep aiming at the front for? There's nothing at the front to aim at, is there? There's no ammo in there or anything. Oh, of course, because they're torpedoes. Torpedoes tend to be a bit less um, choosy where they actually go. Essentially, it's just make sure to hit the vehicle. I've heard a lot of people say that. What are you facing that way for? Oh, no, there it goes. Oh, was it trying to get away from the... Sh yeah, it's a bit close and most of missiles might not hit. Submarines are finicky, sir, and Well, this is our first attempt and that's the important thing. And like I say, these will make good distraction vehicles. They occasionally actually hit a target as well, which is nice. Oh, wow, they're both, like, next to the darn things. Well, it's turning the correct way. Oh, slow motion. Why am I going slow motion? I think the turning really needs to be improved. Just um, adding more, more sideways um, thrusters should help. Thrusters and um, thingy majigs, propellers. What else is that? Is that a section of the ship? Yeah, that's a section of the ship. It's must be blew, blew off in the fight. It's like once it reaches them, there's all sorts of issues. Also a lack of ammo as well as a concern. Well, this is facing the right way now, so that should lock on. Yeah, it's locked on. It's doing the stupid smart targeting thing again, which is so silly. Oh good, it's going to ram into it anyway. Yay! Boom! Where is all the ammo stored anywhere on the ship, or is it all just... Um, was that it then? Just go through. Yeah, all the ammo's in the very centre. This is going to be a very long fight, because the issue is... The issue is... He can't shoot directly down, and we can't shoot directly up, which means right now... Both of our sea slugs are just kind of doing nothing. Because they can't fire, and at the same time he's doing nothing as well. Because his AI, his AI wants it wants him to be as close as possible, and our AI is, has no preference, so this has happened. The controls are really screwy on this thing. I say I'm not actually controlling anything with the ships. I'm just in there. So, the, so the only reason the controls are actually there is just because I'm in there. But the important thing is we did okay a lot of important things. Everything I was testing for kind of worked, you know? It took minimal damage from the enemy. Um, they do lock onto the target, it just takes a while, they're just slow at doing it. They do fire correctly, it's all fine, it's just <laughs> sluggish. Am I trying to get away? It does seem like when it goes too close, the, the AI on our ships kind of ducks away from the enemy, it doesn't really want to be next to it. I know that, I know you can do a, a very very clever things with um, ship AI to do that because they are definitely facing the right way. It's just not the best. Hello. Oh. Okay, I need to get out of this and just kill the damn thing on board now. Don't I don't want to delete the blocks because then I'll have to rebuild it afterwards. I'm going to there. So now this ship will be sinking very, very quickly because it can no longer do buoyancy. Did I just fill that with a repair bot? That is a genius. Where there we are? Hello, Galma. Boom. Boom again. Oh, it's actually firing. Yeah, that's just doing absolutely no damage to the sea slug. It's like, it loses all of its propulsion so quickly once the shot hits the water, and then it's made out of metal. It's just not doing anything. This thing just got too close, and it's just showing off how non-agile our thing is. 
Where's the AI in this thing? It's inside, isn't it? Hello, door. Boom. So, there's all the ammo. Blop. Bang, and I die with it. Glorious. Okay, I'll spawn in and be right back in the battle. So, I got a little bit bored waiting, and honestly, that was going to be an endless battle, which would have eventually won for the sea slug, just its turning speed was so slow, it could never keep up with the turning of this damn thing. So, the missiles were never hitting. It's like when they eventually did, it would have eventually blew the thing up, but I got bored. This is the, this is the Salmonella. This is the Kalmar. As you can see, there are a lot more hits actually hitting, although it's, again, really close. The Kalmar's AI seems to really drive it to be as close as possible to the enemy, which makes sense since the Kalmar has, um, has a huge ram on the front. But it's really annoying because most of my ships don't deal with this very well. Oh, did I just actually capture the Kalmar by mistake? I'm okay with that. Let's just go quickly back to the Salmonella then. We'll just scrap the darn thing. We have a scrapper on the back, I think. No, we have a spawner on the back. Do I actually have a scrapper on this thing? I don't think we do. Hmm, okay. Misc, the vehicle respawner and scrapper. Took a few bits of damage from the coffin now, which I didn't quite realise as well. Uh, it turns out the reason why my mangle wasn't firing is because a missile hit it straight away in the match. You can kind of see it if you replay. I didn't see because I was looking at you know the sea slugs and everything too much, but yeah. So Kalmar, click. Boom, there we go, Kalmar goes bye-bye, we get its resources. So, Sir and Surettes, obviously I've got a lot to learn about submarines, but I've got the basic controls done, I've, you know, I've got the basics sorted, and the sea slug will just make a really annoying, just distraction boat until then. Off camera, I'm going to be practicing a lot with them, and next time we're back, I promise you a better submarine. Oh, look at this little thing, though, it's so sad. It's like, the only reason it's doing this now is because it hasn't got any orders, so it's just kind of flailing. I'll figure this out and it'll be better and just better. So, thank you for watching, have a lovely day, do take care, and until next time, goodbye. Also, first thing I'm going to do with the sea slug is I'm going to put a single torpedo on a turret mount on top instead. So instead of having front facing turrets, it'll have two turrets facing but either way. Why is this thing sunk? It's... Okay, somewhere there's a bit of oh, I see the damage. Okay, yeah, the front's broke off, so so once it gets repaired, it'll be able to be buoyant again. So thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Do take care, and until next time, goodbye. Okay, sir and sirettes, before we go, I just want to um, update you on the current um, state of the sea slug. Ignore the fact that it's currently on the ocean bottom at the moment. That's just because I was testing something. I'm testing new worst case scenario things, like if the enemy is directly above us. We have a new weapon system. Yes, it's simply a turret with the torpedoes on it can fire directly up, left, right, anything, and it tends to actually do the job, as we've just seen. Yeah, I kind of made the thing sink. I caused a hull breach which made the thing sink. Let's just, um, let's, quick, quick, let's quickly fix that just to prove I haven't broke the entire vehicle. And the way we do that is simply delete that and once again replace it with a new air pump. And that should, there we go, and we lift off. Good. Secondly, I have fixed the controls of the darn thing. The thing will now actually control as you would expect in a regular vehicle. It turns out what, what was causing the weird um, control issues, because you can see now it's turning very smoothly towards the enemy, was the two front propellers. It, for some reason, it did not like them. It was causing some serious um, AI glitches, and now we've took... As soon as I took them off, it simply fixed the whole thing. So this is the finished sea slug, with its new very aggressive missiles, which is just wonderful. I love the fact now it can shoot at enemies no matter how agile they are, they will be fired at, mostly hitting. Oh, oh crap, I haven't changed the missiles yet, have I? Have I? Yes, I have. Good. Yep, and they're essentially the same missiles, just like before, which, which are used on the Salmonella, the lovely... Um, fragmentation ones, which simply explode and then shoot the, the fragments forward. So as you can see, there's no stuttering of its movement, it's just circling around, as you would expect, shooting its load <laughs> at the enemy. So that's that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Again, I kind of brushed off a little bit quick last... Oh, oh no, I haven't added the... Oops, Daisy. No, I've added the proximity fuses, why haven't they? Oh, because it takes a second to go off, doesn't it? Okay, so they're so that's so close, the proximity fuse isn't actually having a chance to activate, which kind of sucks, honestly. Because it means, like I said, like I've said before, the missiles have an issue where um, that kind of weapon isn't as effective if the proximity fuse isn't on. So what's happening is because the proximity fuses take a while to actually start, they're not having a chance to set off. So, well, battles won't be this close, and we're still actually hurting him. So that's fine. 
Perhaps what we could do then is, instead of target prox... Oh, that's what was doing the stupid controls, wasn't it? So we're going to change that for an explosive, if we can find an explosive warhead, and that'll just make sure that even if something like this actually happens, that even if the proximity fuses don't have a chance to actually charge up, we're still going to do a nasty bit of damage to them to wait until it's shooting them shot, and yeah, there we go, actual explosive rounds, glorious. So yeah, that's the finished sea slug, thank you for watching, have a lovely day, do take care, and until next time, goodbye, likes, hearts, shares, comments, all the good stuff, helps that me, helps the channel, <gasps> goodbye.